in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wherever we are, we meet in the name of Christ, who is present in every time and place as our friend and brother. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A very warm welcome to this Mass on the fifth Sunday of Easter, wherever you are connecting in from. Wasn't it a joy to hear the bells from the veil ringing before this Mass? John David was able to find a recording of some visiting Devon ringers ringing a few years ago. We got permission to use their recording before this Mass, and we'll continue to do so on Sundays to make us feel a bit more normal. In baptism, we died with Christ, so that, as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him, as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, we give you thanks and praise of heavenly joy and earthly peace. We sing, we worship you, to you our hearts we raise. Lord God, almighty Father, heavenly King. Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, you bore for us the load of this world sin, O Lamb of God. Your glorious victory won. Receive our prayer, grant us your peace within. Alone, O Christ, you only are the Lord. At God's right hand in majesty, most high, who with the Spirit worshipped and adored. With all the heavenly host we glorify. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout they all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. 
While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, let your face shine on your servants. Let your face shine on your servants. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make host to deliver me. Let your face shine on your servants. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Let your face shine on your servants. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Let your face shine on your servants. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And, a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but you, now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak to the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Throughout this Easter season, our readings from Acts of the Apostles have been telling us bits about the life of the early church. From that locked room in the Gospel, where the risen Jesus appears to the Apostles, things have changed significantly. Peter is transformed from fisherman who denies knowing Jesus to the powerful evangelist Jesus had hinted at with the words, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. People are hearing about Jesus' resurrection in their thousands and are wanting it for themselves. They are turning away from their old lives, being baptised and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, not just in dribs or drabs, but in thousands transformed in realizing who Jesus is and deciding to follow him. Today's reading from Acts shows Stephen, who had been appointed a deacon by the apostles, someone who would do some of the work behind the scenes, if you like, to allow the apostles to do apostle things without being distracted by everything else. Stephen was stoned to death for being a follower of Jesus. Following Jesus has never guaranteed an easy life, but Stephen prays, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. He forgives and prays that God may use even this terrible event to bring something positive in the future. And we hear that Saul was looking after the coats of those stoning Stephen. If we had read a little further in that reading, we would have heard that Saul approved of the stoning. Saul, I wonder whatever happened to him after he approved of such a terrible thing. Following Jesus was seen to be so important that people were willing to risk their lives even. The same point is made in our reading from the first letter of Peter. You are a chosen race, we hear, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. By following Jesus, 
you are called into that community, that of God's own people, called out of darkness into light. And Jesus in today's gospel reading says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Clear enough, surely. Come to Jesus. Be part of God's own people. But so often we think, it can't be me. I'm not good enough. I've done such and such a thing wrong in the past. So I couldn't possibly be accepted. And so many other reasons why God couldn't possibly be calling out to me or to you. In Acts of the Apostles, however, we see thousands upon thousands of ordinary people, like you or like me, coming to know Jesus through the preaching of the Apostles, through the miraculous acts of God too. They come, they are baptised, and are anointed by the Holy Spirit for their new life. It couldn't be me though, surely. Not with my background, we tell ourselves. Sometimes, even after decades of church attendance, since baptism and confirmation, we tell ourselves that God couldn't possibly love someone like me, couldn't possibly have a calling on the life of someone like me. But that takes us back to our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. It takes us back to the stoning of Stephen. Lord, do not hold this sin against them, prayed Stephen, while he was being stoned to death, and while Saul was looking after the coats of the murderers, fully supporting their murderous actions, content to sit in the background and letting other people do the dirty work that he supported. If there was anyone we could say God couldn't possibly reach out to, it would be Saul, surely. And those doing the stoning, of course. But later, in Acts, we hear of Jesus reaching out to Saul, who was still persecuting Christians. And he was converted, becoming an apostle, even with his background. If Saul, even after all that he had done, can be called by Jesus and accept that I am the way and the truth and the life, no one can come to the Father except through me. That surely means that none of us, no matter what we may have done in the past, are beyond that call from God, are beyond redemption, called to come to Jesus and be part of God's chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. None of us are beyond that, so let us embrace it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, although we are separated from each other at this time, may our prayers join together as we rejoice in your love for us. We give thanks for the worldwide church. Bless all who are called to be pastors, priests and ministers, all who preach the word and administer the sacraments. We pray for Trevor, our bishop, Tim, our dean, and Stuart, our rector. We give thanks for all the innovative ways by which we are enabled to worship together at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of pandemic, we pray for all nations and those who are responsible for shaping national policies. We pray especially for our own states of deliberation. Give them courage and wisdom to make the right decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on our homes and loved ones. We pray for friends whom we have not seen for a while. Give comfort to those who are finding isolation difficult or who are confined in hospital or home, but do not understand why they cannot receive visitors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for those who care for them in hospital and home. And we pray for medical researchers seeking to develop a safe and effective vaccine. We remember those who have asked for our prayers. Molly, Rosie, Val, Tony, Michelle, Barry, Hilary, Josh, Julia, Father John and Janet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your Son you have prepared for us a place in your kingdom. We remember those who have died recently, including Beryl, and for those whose anniversary of death falls around this time, including Ruth, Callum, John, Roy, John, Graham, Jack, Bill, Jill, Michelle, Beryl, Peter, Anne and Pearl. We pray for the bereaved, especially those who find it difficult to grieve at this time due to the restrictions on visiting and funerals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you, and also with you. Alleluia. Normally during the offertory hymn, a collection would be part a collection basket would be passed around church. Of course, that is not possible at this time when we're all meeting in our own homes, connected virtually through the internet. Thank you to all those who continue to give towards the work of the church by standing order, by bank transfer or by cheque being sent in occasionally. If you're not doing that and would like to or would like to consider that, 
it will be great, very much appreciated. There is information in the order of service you may have in front of you, and it will also be shown after Mass on screen. Thank you for your continuing support. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known to us. Though we are separated, unite us in faith. Though we are apart, grant us the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, 
Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in children, women, and men the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, and God of might, heaven and earth, heaven and earth, are full of your glory, your power and might. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest hymns. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens. Blessed, blessed is he who comes. Blessed, blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you who destroyed our death. Rising, you who restored our life. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, 
rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve us in peace. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, your whole church offers thanks and praise together with Justin, our Archbishop, Trevor, our Bishop, Tim, our Dean, and all those whose lives bring hope to this world. Lord of the living and the dead, Awaken to the undying light of pardon and peace, those who have fallen asleep in faith, and those who have died alone, unloved and unmourned. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Michael, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. And ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live for ever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Jesus risen, Lord triumphant King, Jesus true Redeemer of the world, hear our prayer have mercy, hear our prayer have mercy, give us your peace. Jesus morning star which never sets, Jesus paschal lamb and sacrifice, Hear our prayer, have mercy, hear our prayer, have mercy, give us your peace. Jesus bursting from the shattered tomb, Jesus mighty victor over death. Hear our prayer, have mercy, hear our prayer, have mercy, give us your peace. Jesus, Lord of life and Lord of light, Jesus, for here in form of bread and wine, hear our prayer, have mercy, hear our prayer, have mercy, give us your peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. 
Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant to us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us by your holy word and by our fellowship in the body of Christ. United with him and with all the baptised in every time and place, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Sustain us in our isolation by the power of your spirit, that we may live in peace and free from all anxiety, to your praise and glory. Amen. A reminder that this afternoon we will have the next of our virtual afternoon teas at 3pm via the, by the, by the application Zoom. There is a link on the Facebook, or there will be a link on the Facebook page, and also there is a link on the email that went out yesterday afternoon. Also, there I've just got one notice from John Honour from Holy Trinity about Guernsey welfare and the food bank. And I'm the chairman of Guernsey Welfare Service, which was set up by the churches in Guernsey in 1896 to provide support for those in need on the island. At the present time, one of our main projects is a food bank, which has now been running for eight years. Obviously, in this season, there's an increased demand for help, particularly because of the lockdown, uh, job losses and the financial challenges many people are facing. Over the past seven weeks, we've sent out just over 450 food parcels to households who are needing extra support at this time. That's about 1,600 adults and children. Each parcel contains not only store cupboard essentials, but fresh items such as milk and cheese and eggs and bread, and is enough food for about four days. The average value of a parcel is about £50, so that's approximately £3,250 worth of food that we've delivered each week. And we'd encourage people to get in touch with us either by Facebook or our website or by phone if they need our help. Though we recognise that there are many people not used to asking for help who may need some extra support at this time. But please be assured, we offer a non-judgmental service and we understand it's a difficult time for many reasons. And if you're able to offer help at this time to the food bank, there are three key ways in which you can do that. You can donate money on our website using PayPal or send a cheque to Guernsey Welfare Service Care of Trinity Church. Or you can buy specific items of food and your church leader will know what's needed. You can also follow us on Facebook and then share our posts so that those in need are more aware of the help that is available. Thank you for listening. Thank you, John. And we've got 
great joy of John coming to preach later on this month. He, John is coming all the way from Holy Trinity Church virtually to preach on the Feast of Pentecost on the 31st of May. Next Sunday also we've got the joy of me not preaching or you've got the joy of me not preaching. Natalie, who my wife, who's also training to be a lay reader, a li licensed lay minister, will be preaching next Sunday. So we look forward to her breaking open God's word for us. And so as we prepare to carry on going out into the world as much as we are able to at this time, let us pray for God's blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Come on. 